that made me realize what I'd been missing out on and that I wanted to keep coming back. Oh, there's many things we do to empower dental hygienists. We have the best continuing education speakers anywhere in the country. We have a, a number of exhibitors who are ready and willing to engage in really meaningful dialogue with dental hygienists from around the country. And then we have a whole opportunity for people to come in and engage in a strategic discussion about the future of the profession. So we're not only just celebrating our history, but we're creating our future. And everybody needs to be a part of that. The team approach in treating patients and managing patients is of absolute paramount importance. At the Academy, we've realized that the general dentist and the dental hygienist are key components of that team in managing that patient over the long term. That's why I'm here, to bring an evidence-based approach to encourage team members to come together for the sake of their patient and to provide them the ability to live happier, healthier lives. This is probably one of the only uh, activities in the nation where you can find out what's actually going on in the profession. So I wanted to be uh, aware of all of the changes that have taken place and I wanted to be a part of those changes. So the best thing for me to do was to uh, attend. The classes that are given here are um, uh, informative, they're basic enough to achieve the goal without overwhelming us with information and you leave here feeling really good that you're going to go home and actually do some wonderful things. So this, this venue provides a variety of continuing education, um, great networking opportunities and to be able to meet with hygienists from all over the world and be able to talk and, and learn uh, new things and experience uh, new experiences, uh, it's an invaluable tool an asset for, for me being in the military. I think the thing that makes the CLL so valuable to dental hygienists is that there's something there for everyone. Um, the tracks, the six tracks that are, that are set up for educators, for, for clinicians, for students. The excitement that I get from the students and all of their creativity, they're just going to take the profession of dental hygiene really into the next hundred years with all of their new ideas and the, the technology and all the, the excitement that they bring to the profession. It's fun and it's the energy that you have in a room full of professionals that all think not alike, not the same, but we're all in the same place professionally. The impact on me professionally, it's broadened my scope it's broadened my horizon as a dental hygienist. I am not just a clinician, I'm also an educator. I'm also a researcher. We're evidence-based dental hygiene, which is part of the curriculum for the continuing education courses. Oh, we have several exciting things planned for the 100th celebration. We're going to kick off the um, event on Thursday with a plenary session that features a person that has spent her career being an advocate for the public. We have Erin Barakovich that will come and light the fire under all of us. Then Friday night we're going to celebrate with the um, IOH, Institute for Oral Health, um, Gala and President's Reception. We're bringing back for the second time Miss Debbie Reynolds as our Mistress of Ceremonies for our black tie event. Then on Saturday morning we're going to feature um, the Oscar winning Gina Davis and she's going to come and inspire all of us to become future leaders and be empowered into the next 100 years. And I hope to see you in Boston next year. We'll, we'll see, see you in Boston. Boston.